Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to part 4 of the Ultimate Guide to Bloodborne. Uh, we're going to go through Hypogean Gold today. Yeah, so... Apparently it's jail. Yeah, apparently it's Hypo Hypogean Jail. Which... But I'm in the habit of saying goal after playing the game for like 6 months, so do it. Yeah, so I'm going to try and say jail from now on. Now, this area is technically optional, but we highly suggest you come here because you pretty much get like one of the best weapons in the game here. Now, what we're going to be showing you is like where to actually get the stuff and how to do the things but the area is technically a much higher area than you're meant to be at this part in the game so we suggest that you just get the the tronitus weapon by just suicide running it if it's too difficult for you mm -hmm. hopefully it won't be but like yeah, you can sit down to avoid this guy's hitbox for like half of his attacks it's pretty funny yeah, that's the thing. Found that out during the now, uh, the blind, uh, not the blind, the uh, test guide run. To get to this place, you have to get have killed to by killed, this bad guy. Yeah, and you have to have killed Blood Starved Beast for this guy to show up. Yeah, so that's another reason why you want to do Blood Starved Beast. Yeah, so he's going to drop you off in your cell, uh, and he carelessly unlock leaves it unlocked. Doesn't even close the door. Don't even know if there is a door. Maybe he takes the door with him. Who knows? Maybe it's you're not trap. good enough for a door. Oh yeah, there is a door, but it doesn't even fucking lock it. Well, it's not a jail then, is it? <laughs> <laughs> not a good one, anyway. So we're coming up to an NPC here, which is why um, in the last part we went ahead and um, grabbed the church set yeah. from Cathedral Ward. Because you need that, or you need gas coins garb to speak to this NPC and tell her to go to Yosef, uh, not Yosef, because tell her to go to Odin. Definitely tell her to go to Odin, can't stress that enough. Yeah. She um, She's a blood, she uses blood vials. This is just to show you that I'm wearing gas coins garb instead of one of the black church sets and to show that gas coins counts as church set. Um, she gives you blood vials that gives you a, a decent HP boost, same as, same as a regular blood vial, but then about a half second later it kicks in with some pretty nice health regeneration as well. And we're going to want to use as many of her vials as we can throughout the playthrough because they're really good. We're going to probably use them... We're going to use them when we where we would use uh, two blood vials instead, we'll use one of them. Now, I'm sure we mentioned about her, her connection to the other NPC, the whore. Now, yeah. remember, we took one blood from the whore. You can take five without her going hostile and killing her, but ju we just took one just to be safe. To be safe, I wouldn't take more than four, to be honest, because yeah. the wiki's not entirely clear whether it's up to five or five or more, or if it's more than five. The wiki's not 100% clear on that when we last checked, so I would say take four at most, but... Really don't bother because Adela's blood is technically better yeah. because stamina regen on the other blood, while it is nice, you don't exactly need stamina regen and we're going to get the Hunter of Hunters rune which gives you constant stamina regen so it's way better than a blood vial. Now this is the second thing you want to do is kill that wandering nightmare there as well. That's not going yeah. to be an issue. There's no difficult enemies at this part of this area. So. Here you want to run straight <coughs> in and go kinda to the left because there's another one of these witches. Um, that will grab you from back like this. But <laughs> she'll grab you as soon as you step in the doorway. So just run straight through the door and take a, a slight left angle so that she misses with her initial grab. Yeah. And then you beat the shit out of her. If they do grab you, spam your triggers and uh, spam all of your like R1, L1, R2, L2. Spam them because it reduces the damage now, and you can break the, the hold quicker. If you've been following the guide, this area shouldn't actually give you that much trouble if you do it as we do. But again, yeah. like we said, it is quite difficult for this point in the game and it's just to suicide run to get one weapon but we are getting all the other stuff while we're here just to show you. These baggers do a lot of damage and they have a lot of health so you need to be careful with these guys. Typically the best way to go about it is attack them until the point where their health gets low enough that they will buff because then them buffing puts them like they stay in the same place for a few seconds and then you can get a backstab on them. Yeah. So right here two baggers are guarding that uh, that rune is it? I think, I think it's the moon rune. Yeah, I think it's the moon rune as well. Moon rune gives you extra souls, which is now, absolutely brilliant. Remember to light that lantern, that way you can come back here if you need to, like warp yeah. or whatever. Which you which you might which you might end up doing if you want to come back here before uh, the place advances, which would be after Rom, in case you miss anything, or if you want to come back here at a higher level. Um, yeah. Totally understandable. So we're just going to avoid these guys because there's two of them, and we're low, we're a lower level for these guys, and they're doing way too much damage. So we're just going to get out of here and ignore those ones and move on with the uh, the other items that are in the area. Yeah. Because it's, it's not worth the fight. Now there is a witch, there was a witch, uh, just before we crossed that doorway there was a witch on the right. So I'm just checking to make sure she's not going to come up behind us and grab us. But this part is kind of annoying because there's two dogs. And so a bagger. I think I'm going to try and free him Molotovs and both miss. Or well one misses so that was fucking great. And with dogs I'm, I, I just I just can't. I can't dog. 
Yeah, you're not into the dogs today. I, I really hate dog AI. So, Bagger misses and... Then he kicks me in the face. Now he's buffing and I have to heal, so this is where you should go in for the backstab. Um, which, as you can see there, it does a hell of a lot of damage and because they're so open during that animation for like a second and a half, two seconds, you have enough time to get in there and get the charge attack in. It's pretty nice. Yeah, so down here are some extra items and so two this items down here. opens up the door with those two witches. Yeah, it's like a shortcut down to that section. That's the room, by the way, that has, there's a boss at the end of that room, so we're not going to go there yet, because yeah. it's, uh, once you drop down into the area with the boss, you can't get back, you can't get back the way. And, but we'll explain the significance of that boss yeah. at the end of the video anyway, because there's a thing about him, so. Mm -hmm. So, carrying on just to get these items again, just to reiterate, just suicide run it if it's too difficult. Fuck it, whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, if, if you don't have enough uh, blood echoes on you to level up, spend them all on vials and bullets then just to get your just to get the, the loss minimal and then just go for it over and over again, just grab all these items because <clears throat> they do come in handy in, uh, later on in the game, especially considering we're getting like our backup weapon or what's going to become our main weapon. And lots of twin shards at this point also. Yeah, Such I as from this forget one this guy, yeah. This one's hard to see because he's sitting on top of a wheel and they're like the same colour. Yeah. But this guy, he has a lot of health as well. Um, and of course, if you miss Wandering Nightmares, then just quit and reload the game and stand near where they where they, where they they are originally. Quit and reload the game and they will reappear and then you can get the shards easily that way. So if they run away, don't worry about it. You can always like give yourself another chance whenever you want. Now, opening that door there is the door next to the bonfire that you just lit, or lantern. the lantern, whatever. <clears throat> Um, now what we're doing is we're going to go around here because there is some bolt paper here and bolt paper is very good for some of the bosses. Um, now this one's a soul pack, the bolt paper is next to the pig. Yeah, I mean, if, I mean if anything bolt paper is good for literally everything. Everything in the game is essentially weak to fire or lightning and it's, yeah. that is pretty much true. Anything alien is weak to lightning. Yeah, definitely. Anything, anything beast-like beast is weak to fire. And then there's like a sort of middle ground where some things are weak to arcane but arcane's bad and some things are weak to blood and blood is OP. Yeah. But I mean, bl blood requires like a whole build investment, but with like paper, you just get fire or bolt, so regardless, yeah. you can get them anyway. Yeah, the, the standard buffs in this game are really good. Really good. Because you don't get like blood paper, so you know, whatever. Yeah, thank God. Anyway, rolling onto the top of this like carriagey thing. Yeah, I think you could call it a carriage. Um, at, at this point, we were like, is the boat paper down there? And we are like, yeah, it's next to the pig. So. Yeah, just making sure we remember where everything was. So I'm putting on the pungent blood cocktails that we have remaining because pungent blood cocktails are handy here because you can get all the dogs grouped up into one area pretty quickly and then you can take advantage of that. Yeah. Um, but the problem is that dog AI is dog AI and it's erratic as all hell, so even though you get them all in the one place, they still like run around it in circles because of the way their fucking tracking works. It's stupid. It is definitely useful, the, the blood cocktails though, so we highly recommend yeah. using them to your full, full advantage. Especially yeah. if you want to do suicide runs for this area, blood cocktails will definitely help for that. Yeah, I mean you could go with a blood cocktail molotov combo and try and get as many of them as you can in a single hit. Now, these pigs will fuck you up and... Yeah, this one just... Yeah. Y yeah. This, this particular run of Hypogean Jail is kind of glitchy. Yeah, you'll see in a second with the other pig as so well. So I'm just making sure that guy can't get out because I don't want to get fucking back smashed by a pig. <laughs> but, but he's stuck there. <laughs> yep. <sighs> Should never put a beast in a cage. I know. Eventually he's got to like, go like pig rage mode and just burst out. Yeah. Just waiting for it. And at this point we're quite wary, like, do we walk near it? Or? Yeah, I was just like gonna, I was hoping it would break its aggro. Like, it started just constantly walking forward, so it's trying to get back into its little zone because it came out of its aggro leash. Yeah, and its walk animation clearly isn't like, I don't yeah. know, strong enough to break, break it free. So instead of going near the pig and walking past it, I'm gonna go this way. So just in case it does break out, I'm gonna go this way and go like up and round and keep my distance. Um, but this is us coming up to our main weapon. Uh, so it's actually really fucking insane how good this weapon is. Once you uh, once you beat Rom, this weapon becomes absolutely insane when well, you get the right. Well, for gem. Rom is also a yeah. Insane. For Rom, for Rom, it's good. But after Rom, when you get the arcane gem, the bolt gem for oh, it, yeah, it is yeah. ridiculous. If you don't know what weapon it is, it's the Tonitrus. It's a mace weapon. Um, it doesn't have a transformed state as such. When you use L1, it buffs itself and it uh, does more bolt damage. And it does significantly more bolt damage. I should and say. considering almost everything is weak to bolt damage. You're doing yeah. a lot of damage with it, and it's against Rom. If you're having problems with Rom, <coughs> just use this weapon yeah. because it will fucking annihilate him. 
So I'm using the blood cocktails to get the dogs out of the way so that I can run in and get this tonitrus and then get the hell out of there because I don't want to deal with the bagger and two dogs because that doesn't sound like fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I mean, that's how you use the, the cocktails. We should, just, you know. we should mention as well about the tonitrus. Even though um, it is a bolt weapon and like there are quite a lot of things in the game that are weak to bolt, if they're not weak to bolt, that's not really a problem because the damage boost is so insane that it, it doesn't matter. And this pig is interdimensional. Yeah, it just glitches in and out of existence. Bang! What the fuck? This is the first time I died in this entire playthrough. This was the first time I died and it was to an interdimensional pig. <laughs> he was just really mad that his brother was locked up. Yeah, exactly. That's what it was. He's got that jail victim fury. So this is us back where we were. Uh, obviously yeah. just cut out loading screens or whatever. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fucking uh, let Super Pig uh, go invisible again. Yeah, exactly. Fuck that. Who knows what the fuck happened there? I mean, the most recent recording as well was a little glitchy. There was a snake man who didn't spawn as snakes. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, Bloodborne, Bloodborne's a little buggy still. But not overly so. <clears throat> nah, not overly so. It's good. So, there's more dogs here. And, of course, Dog AI being the best is is just... To be fair, there's the less dogs than you thought. You thought there was only more than two. But there's only two here, so this, that always, should really always, be an issue. I always think there's one on that staircase, that's what it is. Like, it just seems like such a Dark Souls place to put a dog. Yeah. So there's some Madman's Knowledge, which effectively translates it. Now, yeah. there's some fire paper. <laughs> uh, yeah, at this point there's some fire paper, because that's what we're pretty much... Fire paper or special armour is pretty much what we're spending on. Again, uh, reiterating to just spend all your fucking insight on fire paper or armour, because yeah. having high insight does nothing for you it's at not, all. It's not beneficial, it makes the game tougher. And you don't I mean, get any items or anything, you don't get yeah, anything for it, so what's the like, point? The, the best thing you can do is keep your insight... Like, if, if you want to do co-op, then fair enough, keep your insight like five at most. Yeah. You won't need more than that. Anytime you go above five, just spend it on fire paper or shards or something like that there's always there's always something to spend on even if you spend on fucking pungent blood cocktails those things come in handy so anyway now we're going to show you what the deal with this boss is now we're not going to fight this boss right now you can if you want to try obviously but we wouldn't suggest it is a little bit higher level than you would be or should be for this point people people have done it at this point of course it is more people have beaten the game at fucking waste of skin level four people have done that it's, it's, it is doable you can beat the boss right now you you put up a good fight but you can come back and do this boss later when you'll absolutely annihilate him and it'll be yeah. easy now what we're what we're doing is running into the boss's arena and then what the boss does is once you see it you gain one insight now and this it wakes up and triggers an aoe so you want to collect that insight and then you want to get out of there because you only need to witness the boss now this specific one site one insight is important because that one insight that you gain from that specific boss allows you to complete Jura's questline. Now, we had an issue with it, which we can actually show you, which will be good for you to yeah, know. Yeah, because we've got, two diff we've got two contradictory pieces of footage. We've both done the exact same thing in the lead up to this, 100%, we've done this, we've done the test and the guide run the exact same way. So both of these, like no nothing is different prior to Jura in these two builds. And one time Jura's quest works, and one time it doesn't and we can't figure out why. Yeah, so the whole point is, is once you've got that one insight, you can then go back to Jura in Old Yarnum, and as long as you don't kill any beasts, allegedly, you can then speak to him, and you can, he'll then give you a gesture, and he'll let yeah. you use his stuff without you having to kill him. But the issue is, is I know for a fact 100% that you can run in and fight Jura Front, like you can go to Jura this way, even though he's shooting at you, and even though he's aggro, I know for a fact you can do this and still talk to him, so long as you don't kill any beasts, or just don't kill any enemies in this area. However, it didn't work this way for some reason, and we have absolutely no idea why. The only way that I can think of it is because apparently there's some rumour going about that he doesn't take well to people wearing the black church set, which then means that Maybe if you go in the front way wearing the black church set and he gets aggro that way, you can't do his quest. Yeah, we should mention that this, it's not just wearing, it, it's because on the footage that worked, I'm wearing gas coins, which is black church. And on you the went in the that back worked, way. And I went in the back way. So we're not saying the church set is the reason why he won't talk to you. That's not it at all. We don't believe the church set is like, we think it's the condition of entering through the front while wearing the church set. Yeah is what triggers Jura's aggression. So as you can see, it didn't work, so I turned my tail and get the fuck out of there because I wanted to try and get it to work, but we obviously didn't. So now we're going to show you the footage of it working, I think. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> another thing to note is when we were trying to get Jura to be friendly, the last, like, in the guide 
footage. So yeah. the one that didn't work, we you know we're, we're logging out and going back in just to see if any difference would be made that would make him be friendly. Yeah. Nothing actually helped, but. What we noticed was is that one random enemy every time we came into the level kept dying. We didn't and know we where know it was. And we know why. It's because we dropped the Molotov basket at the top of the uh, at the top of the church when you the one that's just behind the Jura. You can go into the rafters and you can uh, you can break the you can break the Molotov basket down and it sets fire to the giant idol in the middle. Yeah. Um. That's that's what keeps killing it, and we can't figure out a way to stop that happening because it didn't happen in the other one that we definitely broke the the molotov basket down and it never happened in that one however in in this one so, ran funnily enough in this one this is the one that does work and one enemy does actually die yeah we always get like 600 so 600 blood echoes or something like that yeah it's, it's, a, it's really strange but um like but this all this does is prove that if an enemy dies that isn't what's making you yeah. aggro it's only if you kill an enemy so that's why we can only base this down to Going in the front way, wearing the black church set, he becomes aggro to you that way, and then there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, because we're wearing gas coins right here, you can tell because of the uh, the scarf that we're wearing gas coins, and he's, he's fine. Yeah, he's so... He's like, totally chill, he's a bro. So anyway, if you... The only thing that we can think of is that if it doesn't work, the, if you have the same problem that we do, then the only thing that we can say is maybe try beat Parl. We're going to beat Parl later on in the game, so maybe come back to Jura later instead of killing him. But you want to tell them that you're not going to hunt the beast of Yarnum, he'll give you the badge, he'll give you the gesture, and then you can go on your merry way. Yeah. Or you can tell him fuck you, and you can fight him and get the badge that way, but you lose out on the gesture. Yeah. And the gesture's kind of cool, because it's like that I'm too cool for this shit, brush dust off the shoulder. So, to reiterate quickly, if you go into Dark Beast Pearl's boss room and get that one insight, so long as you come into old Yarnum without having previously killed Jura, even if you've fought him before, that's still fine, he's been hostile, that's still fine. So long as yeah. you get that one insight, come in here, don't wear the black church set and then just go round the back way and talk to him. This should work. Yeah. Um, so that's the, like, that's the thing that we're trying to say is that you don't actually have to, like a lot of the wikis say that you have to beat Pearl. You don't, you just have to witness Pearl. Yeah. You just have to see him. Because in the test footage we haven't beat Pearl at that point and in the actual gang footage we didn't beat Pearl at that point either. But there's conflicting results and the only difference is that we enter through the front using black church styled armour. And that's the only thing we can really think of that did that. Yeah. But that's so, it, guys. Yep, that's it for this episode. Hopefully this has been informative, and it will definitely be helpful if you do this stuff during your run. Um, yeah, so we've got some more guide stuff recorded now, so we'll probably get that up in the next few days as well. So we'll see you in the next part, and hopefully this was helpful. Yep, be sure to click the box uh, to the left if you haven't watched Cathedral World, and we'll be uploading part 5, which is Henwick Charnel Lane over at the Witches uh, very soon. But on that, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.